Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and take roll call. Uh, Mr. Hilsinger? Here. Mr. Taylor? Here. Mr. Elliott? Here. Ms. Hart? Ms. Hancock? Here. Mr. Fagan? Here. Okay, we have six. Um, do we have a status sheet? No, we've only brought to you the um, old business that was okay. meant to be on the executive session for Monday. So we okay. we'll first things letters for approval. All right, we have no committee uh, reports, no new business considerations, old business, nothing. Uh, we'll go to letters for approval. First one's PC 31 dash. 23 is Tavia Boyd Wells. So this is a letter of recommendation consistent with the commission's uh, granting of this CUP on the, from the January 8th executive meeting. Okay. Um, with that, we need a motion. Make a motion for approval. Second. Second. Second a motion. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it 6 0. Uh, next one, PC 37 23, Charles Tom Bowman. This is also a letter of uh, recommendation consistent with the Planning Commission's recommendation of approval for this CA and then a portion of the site to go to the R2 and FPR2 um, for the construction of a billboard um, was a recommendation from appro for approval. We need a motion. So moved. Do we have a second? Second a motion. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it 6 0. Um, no old business. We'll go to correspondence. First item uh, PC 05 13, John and Kathleen Schoelhart. All right. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Cool. Yeah. All right. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, this is PC 05-13, John and Kathleen Schulhorn. It is a zoned M3 planned industrial district. This is a request for amendments to ordinance 25427. The current petitioner is proposing a new building and requesting expansion of permitted uses to include lodging for a caretaker. This is a 0 0.47 acre tract on the southwest corner of Orient Avenue and Gentry Avenue. Um, this site is in South County and you can see the parcel outlined in red on the aerial map. For context, PC 05-13 was originally a request for change of zoning from R5 to M3. The parcel was previously part of the Hancock Place School District and had been used as an office and warehouse. The request was to use the existing buildings as an office and storage for antique automobile parts. The M3 ordinance permitted only the uses of warehouse and accessory office and prohibited outdoor storage of equipment, outdoor overnight parking and construction of new buildings. Of note, this site has been vacant for several years. The current petitioner has submitted these requests in a proposal for a new garage building in association with reoccupation of the site by a lighting equipment company. Um, the petitioner submitted this preliminary site plan for the new building. As the commissioners can see, there are two existing buildings on the property and the petitioner is proposing a third structure. It's a garage outlined here in red. The garage would feature a 10 foot setback from the rear property line, which is a adjacent to a residential parcel and zero feet from the southwest property line where it is adjacent to commercial development. Of note on this side, the petitioner stated that the garage wall would be replacing an existing concrete structure. Um, the petitioner also submitted this architectural rendering showing the proposed structure, facade improvements to the existing building, and proposed improved landscaping. All right. The department recommends approval of the request to allow for a new building. The proposed uses of storage and transport of lighting equipment are permitted uses in the district, and the new garage does not reflect increased intensity as most activity will be off-site. The building setbacks meet the M3 requirements. 
And also the proposed construction includes improvements to the existing facade and structures. The department also recommends approval of the request to allow for an accessory use lodging. This is an appropriate accessory use for a warehouse that stores highly specialized equipment. In this past year, the petitioner has experienced theft on the property. Um, and this accessory use is also permitted in all other M districts. And finally, the department recommends amending the CA ordinance to include provisions for landscaping as none currently exist. This is an opportunity to bring the parcel into further conformity with the zoning ordinance and improve the visual appearance of a property that has been vacant for some time. At this time, I would like to request a motion. Okay, we need a motion. Move to approve. Second. Who was that? Motion to approve. I seconded. Paula. Okay. Uh, discussion, anyone? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it six zero. Next item is PC 146-83, Deerbirds West. Good afternoon. This is PC 146-83, Michael J. Oh, I'm sorry. I should say Deerbergs West. Um, the, this is a C8 plan commercial district. Um, they are currently requesting amendments to ordinance 11,426 um, as amended to expand the permitted uses to include animal hospitals and veterinary clinics. This is a 20.95 acre tract on the east corner of Lime Ferry Road and Buckley Road. The site is in South County and you can see it outlined in red on the aerial. For purposes of review, PC 146-83 Deerbergs West was a request for a change of zoning from R4 and FPR4 to C8 and FPC8 um, to construct a shopping center. The uh, Planning Commission recommended approval of this request and County Council concurred adopting ordinance 11,426 um, in 1984 and the shopping center was subsequently developed. The ordinance has been amended several times since 1984, first in 1999 to allow outdoor seasonal sales of Christmas trees and related merchandise, again in 2000 to eliminate the right turn out only limitation for the Buckley Road entrance, and then again in 2009 to allow an advertising sign in addition to the business sign along Lima Ferry Road, uh, this was an electronic messaging sign that would advertise businesses within the development. The current request is to amend the permitted uses to include animal hospitals and veterinary clinics, um, but not including open kennels and exercise yards. The department is recommending approval of this request. Vet clinics, um, we find, uh, have a similar intensity to medical offices, which are currently permitted in the C8 planned commercial district. Uh, we also know that a veterinary clinic has operated in the development since 1986 without issue. And we note that the number of tenant spaces within the development that can be leased to veterinary clinics will be determined by the existing parking on site and the parking requirement for vet clinics, which is three and one half spaces for every thousand square feet. Um, and therefore we find that veterinary clinics um, with no open kennels, exercise yards, or overnight boarding are appropriate in this district and recommend approval. So at this time, I would like to request a motion. Okay. We motion for approval. Do we have a second? Again. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. 6 0. And we'll go on to uh, site plans 38 22. Amarin. Good evening, Commissioners. Before you is PC 38 22, Amarin Tesson Ferry, uh, currently zoned. MXD mixed use development district. Uh, the site plan is proposing a telecommunication tower on the track size of 0.6 acres on the west side of Tesson Ferry Road 
east side of Keller Road, northwest side of Bridinger Road. You can see on the left that the site is located in South County, and on the right, um, on the aerial, the, the site is outlined in red. On the left, you can see uh, the site development plan showing uh, the compound for the tower in that red circle. Um, the proposed development on site outside of the tower is pretty minimal. Um, there is a, a proposed parking place for, for maintenance staff. Um, and then on the right, you can see a mock-up of what that compound will look like, or is proposed to look like. On the left, we have a vertical elevation of the monopole. That is 145 feet, which includes the five-foot lightning rod. Um, on the right, you can see a uh, site plan page showing the uh, setbacks from adjacent property lines. Uh, the department will note that um, the uh, petitioner was provided relief from the Board of Zoning Adjustment in their uh, December 20th meeting for the front yard and side yard setbacks. Um, so the site development plan does show uh, 36 feet from the pole to the front yard and then 87 feet from the side yard. At this time, I would like to request a motion. Okay, uh, we need a motion. Make a motion to approve. We have a second. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it 6-0. And then we'll go to the uh, good of the order. Good evening. So as part of our continuing efforts for the monthly education meetings, um, we're going to talk about the conditional use, uh, conditional uses and the conditional use permits, which is uh, something that this commission sees quite a lot. So first, we're going to start off with um, permitted versus conditional use permits. Um, so in every zoning district, there is a list of permitted land uses and a list of conditional land uses. Permitted land uses are those uses that are always appropriate and in line with the scope of provisions of a zoning district. The Planning Commission um, does not typically see um, permitted uses as they can just go um, straight through and go to the staff review um, for proposed changes to the exterior on the site. Conditional land uses um, are those uses that may be appropriate and in line with the scope of provisions of a zoning district, but require additional scrutiny. So this is where you see the conditional use permit um, as a zoning mechanism and the planning commission does review these requests for CUPs. Um, and then along with conditional use permits, there are development conditions that are adopted in conjunction with granting a CUP. So certain land uses and developments um, present unique problems um, when it comes to conditional uses, um, which is what triggers them to um, come before the planning commission. So when we are dealing with these properties, um, there's analysis and, analysis and judgment um, for the consequences of each development and use. Um, is to see if it's necessary to preserve and promote the public health, safety, and general welfare. Conditional land uses are identified in each zoning district, as I mentioned earlier, and permits are issued um, for conditional use permits um, by the Planning Commission. So as you can see in this chart here, um, for the C2 shopping district, items such as offices, restaurants without, fast, without drive through um, store shops and markets, are some of the permitted uses in the C2 shopping district. When they become a little more intense or have a little more scrutiny that they maybe could work with the land, but they just need that extra layer of um, review is situations where you have fast food restaurants with drive through lanes, vehicle repair service and repair shops. Um, they just require, they're a little more intense of a use in that district. So we do require them to um, be looked at by the planning commission. Again, here's just some additional um, examples in the R1 residence district. 
you have single family homes, churches, group homes, elementary schools um, that are permitted. But then when they get a little bit more intense of a use, that's when we start to see these um, need for further review. So they become a conditional use. So group homes for nine or more people start to become a more intense use. Um, same with industrial districts, you have similar things um, for once they hit a certain intensity, they do become a uh, conditional use. So with conditional use um, permits, there is a four prong test and that is how this commission looks at each conditional use to see if they should be granted that conditional use permit. So um, all conditional use permits have to be evaluated on if the request is consistent with good planning practice. It can be operated in a manner that is not detrimental to the permitted developments and uses in the district. It can be developed and operated in a manner that is visually compatible with the permitted uses in the surrounding area. And it is deemed essential or desirable to preserve and promote the public health, safety, and general welfare of St. Louis County. So, as I mentioned earlier as well, when a conditional use permit is granted by the Planning Commission, there are development conditions that are attached mm -hmm. to that conditional use permit. This is how the Planning Commission ensures that the conditional use will be developed in a way that meets uh, the conditional use criteria. And the Planning Commission can require enhanced landscaping, architectural review, hours of operation, um, limitations on signage, However, the Planning Commission cannot require anything under the minimum requirement for underlining zoning districts. So, for example, if there was a conditional use permit in the C3 shopping district, they still have to meet the requirements of a 15 foot front yard setback. The Commission cannot write a condition to give them a 10 foot front yard setback in their conditions of development. So, when it reaches after a petitioner has worked with planning department staff to determine that the conditional use permit is the route that they need to take, they do come before the planning commission at a public hearing to make their request. They then have um, to go through the two executive meetings with the planning commission. Um, so the planning commission can vote on the staff information report and letter of recommendation. From there, the letter of recommendation is sent to the county council where they can receive and file the letter of recommendation. The county council also has um, the right to refer the conditional use permit back to the planning commission for further review. And if the planning commission was to reiterate their decision, um, then the conditional use permit request could go to the public improvements committee. After the county council, if the county council just receives and files the letter of recommendation, um, a conditional use permit is effective 15 calendar days after it's received and filed. And then after those 15 days, the planning department staff prepares a, the conditional use permit um, paperwork and the petitioner records the conditions with the recorder of deeds. And then they continue to go into site plan review with the uh, department of planning staff. So once that is uh, the CUP is recorded, like I said, they go through the site plan review process with the planning department. Um, they have 18 months to um, submit a site development plan and have it approved. And the Department of Planning reviews and approves the site development plan in-house. The planning commission um, can approve architectural elevations if it's um, put in their conditions. And then the developer has two years for the substantial completion of construction. So in projects involving structures, the substantial completion of construction is the completion of excavation for footings and foundations. And in a project involving no structures or insignificant structures, substantial completion is the completion of grading. And then this is just kind of the flow chart that we give to petitioners kind of showing them the entire process um, from start to finish of how they go through with the planning commission for a change of zoning or a conditional use permit. But as you can see, this uh, larger uh, flow chart image shows that once the county council has received and filed uh, your, the commission's letter of recommendation, 15 days later, it is becomes effective and then they work with planning staff to get their site plan reviewed and approved.
And that is all I have for you guys today on that topic. Brenda, if you have any questions. Would you go back to the flowchart slide for a yeah. minute? So thanks for thanks for that, Gretchen. Um, I think that was really informative. But at its core, conditional uses are those that were written into the zoning ordinance. In theory, they could be developed in a manner that, that we desire. But because of whatever factor it is, the intensity, the height, some nature of the use just requires that extra layer of scrutiny. Now, the reason that it does divert from, you know, it follows generally the same process as a change in zoning until the council process, that's because, because of the theory that these uses could be appropriate. Zoning ordinances like ours all across the country, the legislative body empowers the group like the Planning Commission to grant or deny those because in theory, there are conditions that could make some of the uses appropriate. So that's why there's no legislation or change, you know, a change in zoning required for conditional uses. It's just an additional, additional single, usually one property right that's being granted to that property owner, um, which is the the purview to do that is is empower, empowered in the um, planning commission. And then further distilling that. Um, that's why the Department of Planning reviews and approves those site development plans, because in theory, they should become very close to, to how we review um, developments that don't come before the Planning Commission at all. Your regular, you know, office retail, retail sort of development that's permitted a lot of places. But because of whatever factor made them conditional, that's why often we go back to the view with the architectural elevations, because a lot of the times it's the appearance of that use or, um, you know, it's mass or what what have you that makes it conditional. So that's one of the reasons why the elevations do always come back to the Planning Commission. Um, we will send you these slides. I'm, you know, I'm going to take any questions you guys have, but we also are going to include with those slides a um, planning advisory service memo that the American Planning Association published regarding conditional use permits. It's just a two sided um, one pager. Um, that kind of iterates, reiterates this with some more um, sort of um, framework context. So happy to answer any questions. And then about half of this doesn't count when you're doing telecommunication towers, correct? Yeah. Well, yeah. Got, got Speaking of frameworks, yeah, there is um, a lot of them. And that's part of the, I think that lends towards the the concept that in theory, there's something about the use that should make it um, you know, permittable with with conditions. But yes, you're right, Mr. Elliott. There are other other factors at play sometimes as well. Um, it's called the state superseding the county's desire. Yeah. Gary, thanks for bringing that to our attention. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Anyone else? Anything? All right. Seeing none, we need a. Motion to adjourn. Well, just real quickly, um, we ahead. do uh, have a February 5th executive meeting scheduled. Um, there's no, since we didn't have a January public hearing, we don't have any new business to bring, but that there's always the possibility that we may have a couple of site plans or some correspondence items. Um, so keep that on this, we'll keep that on the schedule, but if it ultimately, um, is the is the case that we don't have any items, we will cancel the meeting and, and let you guys know. Okay. That would be a virtual that would be a virtual meeting. All right. Thank you. Now we'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. We have a second. Second. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I have it six zero and we'll see you on the 5th of february thank you thank you thank you, thank you everyone